All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go below, subscribe to Hustlers Kung Fu. That's for all the business content, holding companies, business credit, and some other stuff is coming. Subscribe to that channel and watch the video there. All right, so the thing you're seeing is a comment that was left on the YouTube channel when I was saying, I didn't understand because there's some videos of people who just quit their job without some kind of plan in the background. And I, I just simply didn't understand that. And this comment was like, you don't understand because money comes to you and it's easy. And other folks, are, dude, I used to be homeless. Let's just kind of walk through. And this is the thing. My track record has many, many years. Like um, I've not been homeless since 1999 so that's you know it's 2009 2019 20 it's been 25 years it was a long 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 time ago and i think that's why so many people you know it's on the channel but that was in the earlier content 15 years ago so a lot of people are not seeing this and there there's a lot of people that feel that money just comes to me easily and that that's not the case and that's one way to disregard the amount of effort and hard work that I put into my business. That's a huge, huge thing. And one of the things that I consistently see is, I think people want the creator economy, but they want to put up a video, to be able to go out, to have lunch, to travel, make money, and maybe put up four or five videos a month, maybe work 20 hours a month and then have this grand life. Let me go ahead and share something with you. Um, about 2013, I started going to Vid Summit. I missed the first two, but Vid Summit three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, I was there and I, I literally saw it grow. And like you, I was, unaware of YouTube content creator money, I was deeply unaware of it because I didn't understand the whole system. I didn't understand it because, you know, I was just here, here thinking that all these YouTubers were making all this money. And I got to meet YouTubers and I got to become friends with YouTubers and I began to see a lot of them weren't making the money you think they were making. You know, you can have, there's an article where you can literally have a million subscribers and be broke. It was talking about this girl. She worked in a cafe and she had a million subscribers and people would see her and they would be shocked that she was working because the thought process is if you have a million subscribers, you should have some money. That That's just not the way that it works. And one of the things that I have consistently seen, and this is one of the reasons I'm putting up these videos talking about I quit, because the first few videos were I quit and I didn't have a plan. The second set of videos was I quit, but I did have a plan and I'm making more money now that I quit my job than before. And one of the things that I consistently see, and this is something that I'm doing, uh, literally, when I'm out and about, I'll just stop in a restaurant because I want to see who's working there. And consistently, I stopped at by Burger King, Hispanic. I stopped by McDonald's, Hispanic. I stopped by Zaxby, Hispanics. I stopped by a uh, Arby's, Hispanic. And interestingly enough, I stopped by a Hardee's and there were Americans working. There was Americans and Hispanics working in the Hardee's. But the Hispanics were in the back. And this is one of the things that I'm consistently seeing, and this is why I put up Vendell Williams' video talking about hard work, which is really, really going well. A lot of people just don't wanna work. I mean, I cannot say it any clearer. A lot of people just simply don't wanna work. And you know, this is United States of America where you can actually get by without working. You can have a life, you can make it without working hard. This is America. But see, that that's not the problem. The problem is these people who don't want to work, these people who do not want to do anything, these people who just want to be part of the American system, who just, they don't want to work, they don't want to build anything, they don't want to create anything, they don't want to do anything, 
the, these people are the loudest to complain. And honestly, I think these people live on social media. They're watching all of the TikTok videos. And let, let, let's go ahead and talk about that. It's 2024. And if you're broke and you're struggling, it's because you want to. Unemployment is at 4%. Uh, I need to have my phone over here. Hold on a second. Let's go ahead and see what unemployment is. Unemployment, unemployment. Let's go to the Google machine and let's see what unemployment is. Okay. Unemployment. All right, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that the U.S. economy added 175,000 jobs in April 2024, the slowest job came in six months and below market expectations. The unemployment rate is up from 3.8 to 3.9% 2024, okay? Unemployment rate, 2009 recession. The unemployment rate more than doubled. Their rate increased by 5.3% since the November peaking at 10% in October 2009. Okay. So unemployment right now is 6.1% less than it was in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. So one of the things I consistently see is people are looking for jobs and they say that they can't find jobs or these companies are not hiring. I don't think that's the case. This is what I think the case is. You're a person without education, no degree. You're a person without any specialized skills and you want a job making 50 to $80,000. That's the problem. There's what you want and there's what the market will bear. And one of the things that I consistently see, consistently see is people refuse to prepare themselves, like literally with the second set of videos, uh, Daniel Braun, Taylor Bell, um, they're highly educated and they graduated college and went into a 60 and 70,000. I think Taylor was doing like 100K. She ain't even 25. So there's a, you know, there, there's a group of people in this 2024 economy who have plenty of money, who are making money, who are working, who are doing the things that they need to do to be financially solvent. But there's a group of people who really, there's this guy, uh, he does these videos talking about that literally, uh, there are several guys, there are several guys that make videos about how bad the economy is. The economy today at the moment is not as bad as it was in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. It's just simply not. But you would have people, and literally, uh, there's this guy, Michael B. I, I can't say his last name, he's an Italian dude. His channel has jumped because all he talks about is how bad housing prices is. And once again, literally, there's a multitude of channels talking about the housing prices and the housing price and housing market's going to crash. Uh, there was a house that went on for sale four days ago. House went for sale for 1.5 million. House went on sale Monday. By this weekend, it's already under contract. But there's this housing crash and there's this thing with the cars. And this is something else I saw, and I thought this was really crazy. This guy is a car dealer, right? 
and he and his wife were looking for a Toyota Sienna, a Sienna, a Sienna, whatever they are. And they were going to the dealership and they were talking about their problems with um, getting the car from a dealership. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with that story. That video was made for views. Why? I actually have a friend who owns a car dealership. He has not bought a car from a dealer in the last 15 years. If he needs a car for his, he drives a BMW um, 540, which he got at an auction. His wife drives a AMG, uh, a G-Wagon, which he got at an auction. So if you're a car dealer that has the ability to get cars below market rate, why would you be going to a dealer to buy a car? The, the video was made for YouTube, and I'm gonna tell you why. Negative content does very, very well on YouTube. Why does negative content do really well on YouTube? That's the biggest, biggest bucket of people watching YouTube. Largest bucket of people who haven't gotten an education, who are not doing well financially, who are struggling. Like this person left this comment about me. Anyone who knows my history, my documented history, knows that I was homeless at one point. Anyone knows that I went through a period where I tried any and everything. Nothing worked. Money just wouldn't come to me. It just wouldn't come to me. And only after um, uh, getting a job at Rent a Crate, which I got through fiction, I, I actually lied to get that job. I created my own reference, got that job. And since Rent a Crate, once again, rent a crate, panel systems, a business environment. My life has just been on this upward trajectory, upward trajectory, due to hard work, not luck, not, and th this whole thing. And I, I got a question. I, I want to put it to you like this. So you're, you're sitting there watching all these people because I think these people live on social media and they're seeing all of these people. There's a chick. Who lives in my video? Uh, who lives in the building I used to live in? Her name is Whoa Vicky. You can find her. And I think everyone, a lot of these people want a Whoa Vicky life. Whoa Vicky, uh, whatever she does, she gets money from being on content, uh, do it, being a content creator on YouTube, TikTok. Um, and it doesn't look like she's actually working. It doesn't look like she's working. But I guarantee you. If you were to take Taylor Bell, a highly educated college graduate woman who was doing uh, management consulting, and you put her, you compare her income to Wolves Vicky's, I would not be surprised if Taylor Bell's income is three or four times higher than Wolves Vicky's. Wouldn't be surprised at all. But once again, Wolves Vicky's into that that BS, that whole lower echelon, because like literally. One of the things I see with the lower echelon, which is the hugest bucket on YouTube, and I was doing some Facebook advertising, and some of the stuff I see on Facebook is just crazy. It, it, it's, it's crazy, the stuff I see on Facebook. It's just idiotic. But who do they make this to? And let's go back to wrestling. WW2 wrestling, right? Wrestling is 100% fake. And they don't even lie about it. Everyone knows wrestling's face. But wrestling is a multi-billion dollar industry. Who does wrestling cater to? That same group of people who are watching all of these TikTok videos, who are watching all these videos of how hard it is to struggle, all these. And another thing that I've noticed is you have a lot of people Let's, let's go ahead. I don't even know what it was. I didn't even look it up. Let's see what the price of Bitcoin is. Because I, I saw someone that left this comment on um, the video that the, the, Vin, the, Vin, the, Vin, the Vindell Williams video, like I don't have to work that hard because I got shares making money for me. I thought that was funny. Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up to like 73,000 and it's kind of stabilized at 61,000. And if you had gotten into Bitcoin when it was 15, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Pretty good. Because if you actually have a whole Bitcoin, 
your Bitcoin is is done an amazing. But this this is the thing. This is what people are struggling for. They want the Bitcoin. They want the easy content. They want the TikTok fame. And this is one of the things I could tell you from years and years ago in the Vid Summit and actually meeting and having conversations with a lot of YouTubers is the best YouTubers actually work quite hard. Graham Stephan put out a video and people kind of went off on him because they was complaining. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. He was just talking about, you know, he's older, he's he's about to get married. I don't know, he, I think he's about to get married. I, I know he's in, I know he's in a relationship and they're getting married and he's just kind of pulled back. He stopped making this many videos. He, he just talked about his life as a content creator. Graham was working like a crackhead. And that's the reason he was successful. It wasn't what he was successful because he was lucky. Graham was working and now Graham's older. He's in a relationship. I, I fully expect there's going to be a baby Graham. He and his wife are going to have children. And we're going to see more changes with Graham because this whole thing is changing. And there, there was someone that made a video talking about Graham was whining. And th this writes something. And let me go ahead and say this. If you want to be successful, you need to stop hating on successful people. This is a common thing that I consistently see. People hating on successful people. I put up a video where I was talking about I got uh, hacked for credit card fraud and someone's like, hey, they're going after these flashy YouTubers. I am really sorry if your life sucks that bad that you can be happy when, uh, someone has some misfortune fall their way. I, I'm really, really just sad that your life is being that bad. Because one of the things that I used to do and years and years ago, I used to be a hater. I used to be a hater. And I had to solve that problem because that hater was kind of like a door that would not open. And on the side of that door was success. But because I was hating, because like one of the things I consistently see is a ton of hate ton of hate, a ton of people talking about certain things. Um, and you really, really got to get away from the hate. You, you got to get away from the hate. You've got to really, really move on away from the hate. And I've literally seen people make a lot of money on YouTube using, I'm going to call low class content. Let's call it low class content. These are the people who have not gone to college. These are the people who have not have no education. And he here's the thing. No one is going to give you a job making $100,000 a year when you have no skills. It's not going to happen. But this is what people want to happen. And one of the things I see is, and this is from Dan Coe, which I really like and re respect Dan you're starting to see a lot of people who are waking up, who didn't go to college, don't have a professional degree. You can start a business and make doctors money. But once again, what, the, what is that gonna look like? That's gonna look like hard work. And I'm just curious to see, cause I haven't used this in a while. And I'm just curious to see what the battery is on this. Oh, battery went down to 60. 8%. So starting a business is kind of like the cheat curve of getting around, having to have all of these, all of this education and stuff. Daniel Braun, he started a business and he's literally making three times what he used to make from a job. Um, Taylor Bell, I don't know what she made as a job. I think she's making three times what she made as a job. So starting a business is the cheat code. But let me tell you why the majority of you do not want to start a business. You will have to work hard. That's the big, that's the big hiccup. That's the big thing. That's the big uh, situation with starting a business is you will have to work hard. You will have to organize. You will have to set yourself up to be in a certain position where you can actually 
make a business, get a business off the ground. I literally see all of this stuff. Like once again, you don't need millions of dollars. You don't need a hundred thousand. You don't need 30,000. You can literally start a business for about a thousand to maybe five, let's say 1,000 to 15, 1,000 to 500. If you're going to start a content creator business, um, and there's a, a whole whole skew of businesses you can start. There's a whole skew of businesses you can start. But once again, let's go ahead and look at the behavior. And I made videos about this. Your behavior is why you're poor, not because the economy is bad. Because once again, the economy is not as bad today when I made my first million dollars. The economy isn't as bad as it was. And let's just go ahead and say, like, let's go ahead and just say the economy sucks. Let's say the economy is really bad. Let's say the economy sucks. Jobs are hard to find and unemployment is at 12%. There will still be people in that economy starting businesses, making millions and millions of dollars a year. Same thing. If the economy sucks, if the unemployment was at 12%, I don't think, let me see, let me look got my phone here uh, I want to see what the highest rate of unemployment has been in the last let's see unemployment because unemployment rate for the last 50 years for the last 50 we're gonna go last 50 years. All right, so the unemployment rate in the United States has averaged 5.7% from 1948 to 2024, with a record low of 2.5% in May 1953, in a record high of 14.9%, the pandemic unemployment in April, 2020. So let's just kind of go through this thing. Uh, was the historical unemployment rate the employment rate has varied from a lowest 1% during World War One to as high as 25% during the Great Depression. More recently reached notable peaks of 10.8% in November 1982 and 14. All right, so from 1982 until the pandemic, uh, the highest unemployment got was 10.8%. That was the highest it's gotten from 1982 to 2020, the year of the pandemic. So with all of the things happening in the economy, that's been the highest. And the highest unemployment in America has been 25% during the Great Depression. So if you're out here struggling, you don't have any money, it's because you don't want to work. That's your issue. You do not want to work and you come on YouTube and places and you'll see someone like me and because you don't know my history, you are like, I'm just lucky. And that's what you're looking for, some luck. You don't wanna sit down, you don't wanna study anything, you don't wanna do the hard work, you don't wanna separate yourself, you just wanna sit and whine on social media about how much money you don't have, the struggles that you have, the issues that you have, versus actually study and this is something else too i've been doing it and i'm going to start talking about on this channel is the different type of youtube content that you consume because there are people who literally only consume trash content that's all they consume is trash content they do not consume any educational content they do not they they just don't they're just pretty much consuming trash content and i will go ahead and I, i'll make you this bet the group of people who are consuming trash content have the lowest incomes 
and they're the people who are gonna turn around and go on TikTok and make this video talking about how hard it is to make money in this economy, how they're struggling, how rents, you know, the price of groceries, all this other stuff. There, there's a connection. Your behavior determines your income. Your behavior, your behavior determines your income. And if you don't have the appropriate behavior and all you watch are trash content, cause like the thing with Diddy, at one point that was dominating the news. And there was one YouTuber I found who literally had 40 videos about Diddy, 40. Not about how to make money, how, not how about that, you know. And also YouTube is in different sectors. There's a ton of content, good content on YouTube, how to make money, how to build businesses. But that largest segment of YouTube is literally just watching trash content. And this is one of the reasons that I get so many haters coming in because you, you don't want to learn how to get your money together. You don't want to learn how to manage your money. You don't want to learn how to invest properly. You don't want to learn how to set up a holding company. You don't want to learn how to get business credit. All you want to do is sit and whine, sit and whine and cry about how miserable your life is when you could turn around and change that if you change and adjust the content that you were consuming would make a huge difference in your life. And I will say some of this isn't your fault. Uh, I have started a brand new YouTube channel and YouTube was pushing trash content my way. And what I did is I went down and hit those three little dots on the side of every video and said, not interested and got rid of that. And I started to subscribe to more educated, more relatable content that I actually want to see because I know that if all you watch is trash content, more than likely this is going to lead to you having a trashy life. Like literally when I saw that comment, this person was talking about easy. There is nothing easy about what I do. I've just become very good at doing it. Like right now I've got some stuff that I'm working on for next month. Once again, I'm not making videos. I was drop shipping for seven days or I was drop shipping for 30 days. Uh, that's not enough time from a business standpoint to run any business. But once again, you're looking for cheap, simple, easy content that's literally going to change your life. I'll give you an example. There was something called UGC, user generated content. Went crazy. Now everyone's in it. You can't make the money you could have made when it first started. User generated content was brands. It was like, hey, if you make this content for us to use as promotions, we'll pay you X amount of money. You don't really even hear anyone talking about it now because essentially what happens, and this, this is what happens, like with Facebook, Mark, with FBA, Facebook, face, fulfilled by Amazon, FBA. Before that became a big thing, you could literally go to FBA in a year, be at two, three hundred thousand dollars in personal income. Then it got pushed out, it got pushed out, it got pushed out. Uh, someone was talking about this girl who was early on Toro and her, Samaya's experience went to her channel. She hardly gets any views. Samaya was one of the first people to get on Toro. And because she got there first, she made really, really good money, right? Now it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Why? There are too many people doing Toro. There are too many people doing Airbnb. There are too many people in those marketplaces. Uh, literally, I, I was looking at Zillow today, and with Zillow, there were a number of folks who were trying to rent a failed Airbnb because there's just too many people that have these houses on Airbnb instead of actually doing something really deep. Like, once again, you know, there's so many people who feel that money comes to me. And like, literally, I'm getting ready to start doing credit, excuse me, credit repair. But I'm not going to do credit repair like everyone else out there is doing credit repair, which is they announce that they do credit repair. You go ahead and pay them and you send them your ID and every stuff and they start working on their credit. I'm not doing that. I'm going to tell you why. First of all, before I work on your credit, I need to actually see what your credit looks like which is going to necessitate us getting on the phone, having a phone call. 
First thing you're gonna have to do is buy myfico.com so you get your real FICO scores and we can look at your current credit reports. And then you're gonna have to buy the money management course because unless you were in a hospital, your credit's bad because of some bad decisions you'll make. And that's gonna be your first session. And then once we have this conversation, see what's in your credit report, and you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, maybe I can't fix your credit. If you've got like really bad, bad things, you know, maybe you have a moderate situation, then we would come up with a strategy for you to improve your credit. And this is going to take you having some money. You cannot be broke dick Danny with no money, no options. And it's going to be really, really different. And I don't expect to get flooded with this type of credit repair because I'm not going to, you know, I literally saw someone doing credit repair and they had the CPN tri merge. They were literally advertising that they would set you up with a CPN for like 500 bucks and tri merging and stuff. And I was just, I'm not doing that. I, I am not doing that. And essentially, um, this credit repair will be very different. And part of the process will, we will lead you to starting a business because if you have bad credit, why do you have bad credit? Income, usually it's going to be income. So this is one of the things we're going to do. And I'm getting ready to do some YouTube training, a deep dive into YouTube. And it's not going to be terribly expensive, but it's not going to be, you know, uh, this is something that really, really cracks me up. The number of people that want me to do live training. And I will say live um, with this YouTube training, I will walk you through it and everything. I don't really expect it to be a ton of people, uh, maybe 50, maybe 60, which is fine. And we will get into the deep dives of how to set up a YouTube channel, how to promote your brand, all the things I've done. Cause I was thinking today, uh, I've been doing this since 2009 and it's 2024. So, 15 years of using YouTube to make money. And this is one of the things I'm getting ready to teach and getting ready to set up. And there will be live training and we will be having discussions and we'll be talking about certain things. So there's a lot of things. But once again, um, for all the people out here who feel that I got lucky, because that, that's, that's what people who have not done anything with their lives, that's what they love to say, you got lucky or you know you don't understand. I was just looking, and then a lot of people were like, you know, thumbs up my comment. I was homeless. And the majority of you have never been homeless, and nor do I hope that you become homeless. But I pray that you don't become homeless. But this whole notion of, you know, uh, <laughs> of me getting lucky is very, very interesting when you look at all of the stuff that I had to do to get to where I'm at. It is very, very interesting. Really, really interesting. All right, so that's all I got. I will talk to you guys in the next one. And go ahead and watch these videos because essentially uh, what I'm seeing is happening is I'm moving the people who are serious about business, they're going to Hustlers Kung Fu because there's not like a big wave of people running over there. It's just people who are seriously want to start a business, who want to learn about holding companies, business credit, uh, YouTube, the YouTube stuff will be over there. And I don't really, like I said, you know, I, I'm thinking, I'm kind of thinking what I'm gonna do with this channel. It's just gonna be a, a broad based content. That's what I think is gonna happen to this channel, but we will see as we go on. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe to Hustlers Kung Fu and subscribe to the channel and watch all of the videos. And unfortunately, there's only like 16 videos over there. So you can literally watch all these videos and not spend your life watching videos. I have no expectation for anyone to watch all of the videos on this channel. That would be insane. That would be crazy. But with the new Hustlers Kung Fu, you can stay up to date, you can learn the things you need to learn, and you can set yourself up to be successful in the future.